And so I want to begin with my first point here that I want to share with you, and it comes from the book of Proverbs, and it says this, do not withhold good from those to whom it's due when it's in the power of your hand to do it. I got to tell you, this is one of my very favorite scriptures. It just is. I just love it when God gives us an opportunity to do this. And this is my first point. Do good. Here's a good theme for this year. Let's do good. You know, Helen Keller said this. She said, I'm only one, but I'm still one. I cannot do everything but I can do something. I will not refuse to do the something I can do. You see, we're supposed to be an answer to other people's questions. We're supposed to be solutions to other people's problems. You see, we should get in the way if somebody is on their way down. And when others are walking out, We should be the one who is walking in. Walk in your neighbor's shoes. Sit in your boss's chair this year. Walk in the path of your best friend. Do good. Trust me, you have it in the power of your hand to do it. You may have it in the power of your mouth to do it. You may have it in the power of your wallet to do it. Remember this. Your steps are ordered. Think about it. Your steps are ordered. And that's not just for you. It's for others also. This morning, Linda and I were were at breakfast. We got up from breakfast and we went into the elevator. And on the elevator was another gentleman. And I could tell right away he wasn't from this part of the country. You know what I mean? He had a distinctly different look to him. And he said, uh, you know, hello, uh, why are you guys here? Where are you from? And I said, I'm from Tulsa, and I'm here. I'm speaking at a church this morning. And he stopped, and he looked at me. Are you a reverend? And I said, yes. He said, would you pray for me? His name is RJ. And Linda and I said that we would pray for him. And we promised that we would, and we went straight to our room, and we prayed for RJ. Our steps are ordered. I even saw him in the lobby before I got got in the car with Steve to come here again a second time. And I went over to him, and I said, we're praying for you, RJ. And I'm going to let everybody know at Church on the Rock about you. You see, our steps are ordered. And yours are, too. You see, you should be on the lookout to do good everywhere you can. There's no unimportant jobs. There's no unimportant people. There's no unimportant acts of doing good. You see, you should do good. You never know the good it will do or the bad it will prevent. You see, people have a way of it of becoming what you encourage them to be. An elderly man was on his death's doorstep. He was up in his bedroom and he was definitely near the end of his life. And as he laid in the bed, he began to smell something very familiar. It was the aroma cascading up to his bedroom upstairs, the aroma of his favorite chocolate chip cookies. He was so excited. He, he gathered his remaining strength and he lifted himself as best as he, as he could from his bed. He leaned against the wall and then began to move along the wall to the stairway and grabbing the, the rail of the stair, everything he could, he began to make his way down the stairs and slowly he made his way to the bottom and he gathered his remaining strength And he moved into the kitchen and even took greater effort 
he forced himself to the floor and crawled over to the table and he saw on a table in the kitchen hundreds of beautiful chocolate chip cookies. He thought, have I gone to heaven? Because they were all spread out or was it, was it one final loving and heroic act from his devoted wife seeing that he would get, be able to leave rather the world a happy man. He reached over from the floor and his withering hand began to touch the edge of one of the chocolate chip cookies when all of a sudden his wife smacked him on the hand with a spatula. Stay out of those, she said. Therefore, the funeral. <laughs> you see, stop smacking away opportunities to do good. You see, you're not here today just for yourself. You're here for someone else. It's always more blessed to give than to receive. You know, it's just, I have this rule I try to in my marriage. If I think something good about my wife, Linda, I say it right away. Some of the most strange times, I promise you. She'll wake up, she's got her robe on that's 10 years old, her hair's all over the place, she's coming out to get the coffee, and I'm going, man, you look good. <laughs> I just say it. If I think it, let's do good. If we think something good, if we can do something look do it, good, let's do it. Let's be instant to obey, taking action without delay. Just one act of yours might turn the tide in someone else's life. You see, kind words, they don't cost much, but they accomplish much. They always bring out the good in other people. And studies have shown that even the most introverted person, you may think you're the shyest person in the entire world here this morning, but even if you are, studies have shown that even the most shy person will have contact with more than 10,000 people in your lifetime. Just think of the opportunity we all have to do good to others. Withhold not good to those to whom it's due when it's in the power of your hand to do it. You know, when God gets ready to bless your life, you know what he does? He sends a person into your life. God blesses people through people, so be that person. Do good. Here's point number two, how to have a truly happy new year. Do good, and then do this, give thanks. Give thanks. First Thessalonians says this, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, give thanks. The Bible also says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You see, I believe that the degree that you're thankful is a sure indicator of your spiritual health. The more thankful you are, I believe the more strong you are spiritually, grateful. And appreciative words are one of the most powerful forces for good in the earth. You see, appreciation changes everything. Gratitude changes everything. I have a question for you. What would your life look like? What would your business look like? What would your relationships look like if all of a sudden in 2024, you became the most grateful, thankful, appreciative person that you know? What would your life look like if you became that person? You see, I like to say it this way. Do you count your blessings 
or do you think your blessings don't count? And if the only prayer you say your whole life is thank you, that would probably be enough. Thank you, God. You see, replace regret with gratitude. Be grateful for what you have, not regretful for what you don't have. You know what? Here's the key. Here's what successful people do. They take what they have, they're thankful for it, and then they go and make the very most of it. And really, that's our charge this year, to be thankful for where we are right here, right now. God can use you with what you have and be thankful for it and go out and make the very most of it. That's what we're supposed to do. You know, there was an, there was an old lady who was a positive soul. I mean, she was a positive person. And she did that. In fact, she lived her life that whole way, being grateful and making the most of it. And she showed that by one day, she woke up in the morning, looked in the mirror, and saw that she only had three hairs left on her head. Now remember, this old lady was a positive soul. So she looked at those three hairs. She said, three hairs? Huh, I know what I'll do today. I'm going to braid those three hairs. And she went out and had a great day. But two weeks later, she's looking in the mirror again. Now remember, she's a positive soul. She looked at herself in the mirror, and there was only two hairs left on her head. She said, two hairs, I know what I'll do. A center part will be perfect today. That's easy for me to demonstrate. And again, she had a great day. One month later, she's looking in the mirror. This time, only one hair left on her head. But remember, she's a positive soul. One hair, she said, I know, a ponytail will be perfect today. And again, she had a great day. But only five days later, she's looking at herself in the mirror. No hairs left on her head. She looked at herself and said, no hairs left. How wonderful. I won't have to waste my time doing my hair anymore. <laughs> Successful people, they take what they have, they are thankful for it, and then they go and make the very most of it. Know that you are blessed. You are blessed. If you can't be thankful for what you have, at least be thankful for what you've escaped. I was driving my car one day, and the busy, I came to the busiest intersection in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was totally preoccupied, and I ran the red light at the most busy intersection in my city, and after being greeted by several horns... And one guy that wanted to let me know that I was number one. <laughs> I'll never forget pulling into the parking lot and giving thanks to God for his protection even when I'm stupid. We all have a lot to be thankful for. You know, no matter what house you live in this morning, wouldn't you rather live there than be in the best hospital in the St. Louis area? And think about it, at any given moment, there are more than a billion people who would gladly trade places with you and me. And a friend of mine had this conversation with a foreign exchange student from a very impoverished country. And as they talked and compared and contrasted their experiences, she said to this person, the person from the impoverished country said, said to this friend of mine, you Americans... You get to complain about the nicest things. You see, today is the day to be thankful. Give thanks. The Bible says in Philippians, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for your answers. 
And if you do this, you'll experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can possibly understand. You see, if you look at life the wrong way, there's always cause for alarm. It's like the way a $20 bill looks so big when it comes to church and looks so little when it goes out for groceries. Don't waste your life being unthankful. Don't waste your life being ungrateful. Don't waste your life at the complaint counter. You see, the more you complain, the less you'll obtain. And how many successful complainers do you know? You see, we are people who give thanks. There was a young lady that had to travel for her work. Unfortunately, it made her pretty nervous. And so what she did was she took her Bible along with her because it made her feel more peaceful as she traveled. And one time she's sitting next to this businessman on the plane and the guy saw her pull out her Bible and he kind of looked at her and kind of smirked and then went back to, to what he was doing. But after a while, he couldn't resist. He, he turned to the young girl and he said, you don't really believe all that stuff in there, do you? The lady replied, of course I do. It's in the Bible. He said, well, what about that story about that guy who was swallowed by that whale. Oh, Jonah, she said. I believe that. It's in the Bible. He asked, well, how do you suppose he survived all that time inside that whale? The lady said, uh, I don't know. I guess. I guess when I get to heaven, I'll ask him. Well, what if he isn't in heaven, the man said. Then you can ask him, said the girl. <laughs> you see... When you feel like complaining, bring God into the situation. He will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And if things aren't going so well, stop. Stop. And be thankful for what you have because God always starts with what you have to take you from where you are this year to where he wants you to be this time next year. He starts right now, right where you're at, with what you have. That's why it's so important to be grateful. He uses grateful, thankful people. Sometimes it's good just to stop and be thankful. How many of you have survived the worst thing that's happened to you. How many of you are glad that you're one of God's kids? You're a child of God. I'm never, I never cease to be amazed by the faithfulness of God. His love that's everlasting. His grace that's ab that abounds. His mercy that's new this morning for every one of us. His son given for every person here. What I'm talking about here is having the right perspective. Again, what would 2024 look like for you if you became the most grateful, thankful, appreciative person you know? Think of the impact this church would have in this community and beyond if people from this church were known as appreciative even more appreciative and grateful people. You see, my challenge to you is don't find yourself at the end of your life saying this, what a wonderful life I've had. I only wish I'd appreciated it and realized it sooner. We ought to have this attitude. God, you've been so good to me. Just give me one more thing, a grateful heart. Point number two, give thanks in 2024. And here's point three. I think you're gonna like this. Live life laughing. Live life laughing. The Bible says, happy are the people 
whose God is their Lord. Happy. We're supposed to be happy, joyful, laughing people. You know, the Bible says when God puts you together, it actually put a smile on his face. Exactly how he made every person here. We are to be happy, joyful people. Honestly, it's why I always, when I get the privilege of sharing, I always want people smiling and laughing. We, are, we should be the happiest people on the earth. We have all the reasons to be joyful, all the reasons to be happy. And we should start living that way and showing that way and being that kind of a happy person. Live life laughing. Don't be a person who has a highly developed instinct for being unhappy. Instead, do what the Bible says. Be glad for all God is planning for you. Be patient in trouble and prayerful always. You see, the word is be glad in 2024 for all God is planning for you. Live life laughing. We decided that's our theme for our family. And in fact, it brought tears to my eyes when my wife and my daughter got me, I guess us, a picture with the words, live life laughing, and we've got it up in our home right now. That's the way we Christians should be. We should be the happiest, cheerfulest, gladdest people on earth. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 24, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. There was a young girl, little girl, she would walk to school uh, every day. And one morning she got up early and was headed out for school and her mom waved to her goodbye and she was heading out the door, super cheerful. And the mom kind of noticed that there was kind of threatening skies out and, you know, but the girl was just skipping away on her way to school. And, and as, uh, it wasn't too long after she had left to head to school. All of a sudden, the storm really picked up, and there was lots of lightning started to flash. And so the mom uh, decided that she should probably get in the car and make sure her daughter was okay uh, on her way to school. And, and here's the lightning going like crazy, and her mom's driving in the car. And up ahead, she can see her daughter, and her daughter would walk for a while, and then there would be lightning, and she would stop and look up. And then she would continue on, and her mom noticed this, and finally she pulled up beside the child and rolled, got her, rolled her window down and said, what are you doing? And the child said, I'm trying to, take, I'm trying to look pretty because God keeps taking my picture. <laughs> you see, we should face the storms that come in our life with a smile of hope. And the best facelift you can ever get is a smile. A smile is an asset. A frown is a liability. And a smile is the shortest distance between two people. And we should be like the Mona Lisa. She keeps smiling even though her back's against the wall. You know, Linda and I have been married for almost 47 years, and I can tell you one of the secrets to our, our marriage is that we have never had a single day in our marriage that we haven't laughed. Seriously. I mean, we just laugh. I mean, even at the most inopportune times. Seriously. It's been unbelievable. One time I remember I had had heart surgery 20 years ago, and, you know, they open you up, and it's uncomfortable. And I'm in the hospital. I've got this special heart-shaped pillow. I'm laying on the bed, and Linda's in the room with me. And there was some commercial on TV that was hilarious. And, and she was making jokes and saying stuff to me, and I'm like there, and I'm, I'm trying to laugh, and it's, 
I'm like, get out of the room. You're making me laugh. It's hurting so bad. Even that merry heart was doing like a medicine right there. You see, if you find yourself dog tired at night, it's probably because you growled all day. You should learn to laugh. Even laugh at yourself. It's been said a person with a great sense of humor may bore others, but he's never had a dull moment themselves. You see, I think one of the greatest things God created was laughter. It is. And do this. Smile. It adds to your face value. Live. Yes. Go ahead and clap on that. Live life laughing. Thank you for watching the broadcast today. Didn't John do a great job? Wasn't it a right now word? You know, before we go off the air today, I want to ask you the most important question I could ask you. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Have you surrendered your life to him? If not, I want to lead you in this prayer. Or maybe you're watching today and you say, Pastor, I'm a Christian, but you know, I need to reset my life. I need to get back on track. I need to get back following and serving, living for God. Pray for me. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say it with me. Heavenly Father, I repent. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that he died for me and he rose again. Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and take my life and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, you prayed that prayer. I wanna encourage you, if you're in the St. Louis area, come and join us this coming Sunday at nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, or our Spanish service at two o'clock. If you're not local, Find a local church where you can be a part of that community. Well, you know, we appreciate you. We love you. We pray for you. Until next week, don't forget, God is for you. In a world filled with uncertainties, challenges, and triumphs, Pastor Blunt reminds us of the eternal truth that God is for you. Join us on a journey of faith, love, and divine support with Pastor David Blunt's new book, God Is For You. A lot of people have the wrong picture of God, the wrong image of God, the wrong understanding of God. This book, God Is For You, will give people the proper picture of who God is, that God is a good God, that God loves you, that God has a plan for your life, and that God is for you. God is for you reminds us that regardless of our circumstances or past mistakes, God is on our side. God is for you is available now on our website. Visit cotr.org book to order your copy today.